For years, media, politicians, and so-called experts have been telling us that electric cars are about to save our planet. And we almost bought this story, until the more recent studies started to show surprising results. It turns out that EVs are not as green as it was believed. It turns out that they bring a lot of environmental challenges. Stay with us because we have huge news, as the new study reveals shocking EV scams. But first, hit the subscribe button and make sure to get access to the latest updates in the automotive industry. First things first. Okay, let's start from the very beginning. Do you know how EVs are made and what materials are required? Just like regular cars, EVs need energy to be made. The only difference is that they need much more. And we are talking about the power that's coming from various sources because EVs are produced in various parts of the world. And in most cases, coal is where all those assemblies are getting the power from. But that's just the beginning. Besides typical assembling processes, EVs also require batteries, which are by far the most precious part of every electric vehicle. Why is that? It's because they are made from rare earth elements. They are called rare for a good reason, because they are hard to find, and therefore also quite expensive. We will take lithium as an example, as it is one of the most common elements used in battery production. The thing with this quite reactive and unstable chemical element is that it requires a pretty complex mining method. First, it's usually deep underground, so we usually need plenty of power and tons of dynamite to get to it. Then the extraction process begins, and in most cases, this requires a massive use of aggressive chemicals, such as sulfuric acid. When we say massive use, we think about hundreds of gallons on a daily basis, because on every ton of extracted lithium, you get 75 tons of acid waste and one ton of radioactive residues, according to the Chinese Society of Rare Earths. What's used even more is fresh water, and even though mining companies claim that the used water can go through purification and get back to the ecosystem, we doubt that's happening in developing countries, where most of the mines are located. In other words, no one knows how to deal with so many tailings. Mining companies suggest the use of some kind of foil in the ground, but once again, we live in a world of corruption, so these companies will try to avoid these protocols for sure, just to cut expenses. Finally, all this leads us to potentially completely devastated surrounding areas. Polluted water, vanished flora and fauna, and a landscape that looks like the moon's surface. That's what usually comes with the quest for rare earth elements. Carbon Footprint Concerns With mining, assembling, and other things in mind, it's pretty obvious that the production of electric cars requires much more energy compared to gas-powered vehicles. Moreover, the difference is so big that gas-powered cars need to make 100,000 miles on average to leave the same carbon footprint as an EV. You're probably thinking now, well, okay, but once an EV gets out from a factory line, it doesn't emit carbon anymore, so by the end of its lifespan, it will end with a lower footprint than a gas-powered car. That would be the case if we lived in an ideal world. But our planet is anything but that. Electric cars still need charging on a regular basis to spin their wheels, and ideally, that power would come from renewable sources, such as wind, sun, or water. Unfortunately, that's not the case in most parts of the world. We could talk about zero emissions in Nordic countries, maybe, but in America and the rest of the world, most power is still coming from coal. According to some research, 61% of the world's power is still coming from carbon-emitting power plants. So, talking about EVs as a solution for a green environment is absurd. We can refer to one of the researches that suggests that, on average, electric cars emit 100 grams of carbon dioxide per mile. After 100,000 miles, that would be around 10 tons of carbon dioxide. And if you want to compare it with a gas-powered car, let's say that an average internal combustion engine would emit around 35 tons. Then make sure to take EV production we talked about into account, and you can come to a conclusion that, on average, EVs actually emit more carbon dioxide than their more conventional counterparts. Beyond CO2 when we talk about pollution, carbon dioxide is the first thing that comes to everyone's mind. But that's just one aspect of the whole issue. Cars are bad for the environment in many other ways, such as the small particles that come from tire wear. These can negatively affect the environment in many ways because they end up in air, soil, and water. 
And guess what? EVs are even worse than gas-powered cars in this aspect. Because EVs come with massive battery packs, which add hundreds of pounds to the curb weight, and the fact that EVs are significantly heavier than gas-powered cars also means that more pressure is put on tires. Logically, this causes more tire wear, so tires from EVs actually release more of these particles that are, according to some experts, 1,000 times more dangerous for our health. Besides environmental impacts, this also means that more frequent tire replacements are required, which in practice means higher running costs. Then there are the brakes. If you're familiar with the way they work, you know very well that pads and discs wear over time, and the additional weight of electric cars once again leads to increased release of dangerous particles. According to the air quality expert group, particles that come as a result of brake wear account for about 20% of the total traffic pollution. So it's easy to conclude that with more heavy and bulky EVs, this percentage can only get bigger in the future. This is just another layer of the negative environmental impact EVs have. The negative impact of additional weight can also be seen through the aspect of safety. First of all, with hundreds of pounds of added weight, EVs are more challenging to handle. More weight also means more force during an impact, which puts other participants in traffic at higher risk, especially pedestrians. High prices, not much in return. The best way to convince someone that EVs are scams is to show them the prices. EVs are still way too expensive, so it doesn't surprise that the market is slowing down at the moment. During the last year, the average sum paid for an EV was between $55,000 and $60,000, depending on the source you want to use. On the other hand, gas-powered cars are still paid way under $50,000, while hybrids were paid $42,000 on average during the last year. But the price itself wouldn't be an issue for most customers if they would get something in return. The problem is that they don't. EVs are more expensive, but are they also better than gas-powered cars? No, they aren't. We can often hear how EVs are quicker than gas-powered cars, which is true, but other than that, are there any other advantages? The ownership of electric cars is nowhere near as convenient as in the case of internal combustion-powered vehicles. First of all, there is the autonomy. For the extra price they pay, the first thing customers get is range anxiety, because if you look at the current EV offer on the market, you usually get a vehicle that is capable of making around 300 miles on a single charge. But that's only in ideal conditions. In real-life circumstances, the actual range drops significantly due to cold weather, heavy acceleration, and various other factors. Then there are the charging issues, because in many areas of the U.S., it's not so easy to find a public station. Not everyone can rely on convenient overnight charging in a garage. A huge number of EV owners are relying on public chargers, and their experience is far from ideal. The charging network is not great. But that's not all. According to JD Power, every fifth charging attempt failed during 2023 for various reasons, while another research that was taken in the San Francisco Bay Area came up with an interesting result that says that only 72.5% of Electrify America chargers were operative during the last year. Surprisingly high running costs. Remember when everyone was convincing us that EVs are going to be significantly cheaper to run than their gas-powered counterparts? Well, things turned out quite the opposite, for many reasons. Once again, we can get back to public chargers and the fact that fast DC charging is often more expensive than gas. Then there is the repair cost. One of the reasons why many believe that EVs would be cheaper to run was because of the projected reliability ratings. When you look at the design characteristics, EVs do feature fewer parts than traditional cars, Logically, this would mean fewer problems and higher overall reliability ratings. But once again, there isn't much logic in the case of EVs. The latest survey, taken by Consumer Reports, which included more than 300,000 cars produced between 2000 and 2023, clearly showed that EVs cause 80% more problems than gas-powered cars. Complaints were numerous, and for various reasons, starting from what we all expected, frequent battery issues, then software issues appeared, and it became pretty clear that over-reliance on digital controls was a mistake. Finally, let's not neglect the fact that the production of electric vehicles costs a lot, and that legacy car makers still haven't figured out how to make EVs profitable. In order to cut production costs, many things have been neglected, including quality control. 
As a result, many customer complaints are actually about poor build quality, about things like bad alignment of body panels, bad assembly of certain interior parts, etc. EV growth is slowing down. When we take all these issues into account, it doesn't surprise that the EV growth is at a significantly slower pace than everyone expected. Car makers like Ford and GM have lost $5 billion on EVs only in 2023 and now are cutting investments and postponing production of the most promising prospects. Even Tesla was forced to slash the prices to boost sales. At the same time, Biden's administration doesn't give up on its overambitious plan to make two-thirds of the new car market all electric by 2032. Car makers, dealers, customers, everyone suffers because of the strategy that was based on momentum rather than a deep and comprehensive analysis. What are your thoughts on this? Are we going toward the inevitable collapse of the EV market? Or maybe the government is finally about to start acting rationally and slow down a bit with its EV push. Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.